and welcome to a new episode of To The Point. It's World Minorities Day and we're trying to understand the various equations prevalent in the country right now when it comes to really dealing with the minorities. And joining us for a discussion today is a Minorities Affairs Minister, K. Rehman Khan Saab. Thanks a lot for joining us here, sir. World Minorities Day, Minority Rights Day rather, what is the significance of a day like this? How should we really remember a day like this? You see, minorities in any society, there is a, a, a large section of the population if belong to a particular segment. All other sections of the population will, will be defined as minorities. So it is, and they will feel sometimes when the large section may be, they will be discriminated or they may not get equal rights. So that is why the, our constitution has defined the rights of every citizen. And that right has to be got and it is the duty of every welfare state to provide the equal opportunity, equal right without any discrimination to society. And that is why the minorities' right is, is to uh, remind that they have also a right. And that is the reason why the minority days are celebrated all over the world today. In India, of course, uh, minority affairs is, is a separate ministry altogether. It, it came into being, uh, I think, in, in the first, during the first term of UPA. There was also the sense that, you know, especially after the Sachar Committee report, that a number of issues related to minorities were, were unaddressed. So to what extent do you think have we really come in, in this entire period? The UPA one had promised, that is the Congress party had promised in this election manifesto in 2004, that they will establish a commission to study the socio-economic and educational conditions of the Indian minorities and constituted a Sachar committee, which is popularly called as Justice Sachar Committee report. And this report is in a way eye-opener to the entire people of India. It reflects the conditions of the minorities in the socio-economic educational sector. So it establishes that though we have a constitution, though we have a equal opportunity for all, though there should not be any discrimination, but in effect, these minorities have remained backward in all sectors, social sectors, education sectors and economic sector. So the government thought it fit to separate, carve out a separate ministry to address all these issues. Because uh, we, if you have to give their rights, due rights of all citizens, the sections of citizens, they are, because we are a diverse society, and we have to take care of all sections of the society. And uh, rightly, the uh, UPA government and under the leadership of Manmohan Singh and Srimati Sonia Gandhi, they thought it fit to establish a separate ministry and give a mandate to this ministry to preserve the constitutional rights and provide equal opportunity to all citizens, including the minorities. Now, you know, especially in the second term of UPA, uh, your predecessor, of course, uh, was also somebody who was very looking very strongly into all these other elements as well. But, but obviously there were also concerns because there were other, other ministries also that he was handling. Now that you have come in, there is a full-fledged ministry for minority affairs. You've been here for, for a couple of months now. What's been your experience as the minority affairs minister? You see, I have just taken over. I have not even completed 60 days. Yes. But I'm fascinated. It is a big challenge to me also. The challenge is because I don't have the full five-year term to deliver. The expectation of the minorities after a full-fledged minority affairs minister is more. And I am trying to address the basic issues of the minorities, which concerns them for their economic upliftment, educational upliftment, and social uplift. I am addressing these issues. And uh, in that, we have to see education. I give top priority to education because all parameters have indicated that the minorities, particularly the Muslims, have remained backward with other sections of the society. Okay. And here it is more concentration is necessary. So we have established a Maulana Azad Foundation to promote education, especially among the Muslim communities, Muslim minorities. 
we are uh, taking up uh, in a massive scale the promotion of educational institution, infrastructure and other facilities required to bring the minorities, particularly the Muslim community, uh, equal to at least, not above everybody, equal to all the sections of the society. And it is a big challenge. In the meantime, there are emotive issues also Arabs. And that also cannot be ignored because it is the mandate is not only to give constitutional right, but to listen to the government should be a, a government's duty is to listen to the grievances of the citizens and to as far as possible uh, see that whether the grievances are right to have to set right it. So in that that is also a big responsibility. We are try, going to set up a grievance cell so that I will that their grievances will be addressed and our mandate is also to liaison with other ministries who are who are, whose duty is to deliver the social sector educational sector there are 11 ministries attached to us yes. where we can uh, we can uh, liaison with them to get the due share to the minority all right so 11 ministries coordinate with within the upa and then all other states and respective state governments to also really deal with um, We'll come to, to you know, this aspect as well and how it has been to really coordinate with, with other um, machinery of the government. We'll take a short break now. We'll come back with lots more to be discussed when it really comes to the condition of minorities in the country. Welcome back. We are in conversation with the Minorities Affairs uh, Minister, Mr. K. Rehman Khan. Thanks a lot for, for talking to us. Uh, We've been talking about how it has been to really function with, with a number of other ministries within the UPA as well as how it has been with the states. Let's start with, with other ministries. You know, when we talk about, for example, dealing with, with bigger ministries like Home Ministry and, and a number of other issues, including the, the issue of terror laws or for that matter, communal violence bill. What has your experience been? You see, I have started, see, the biggest mandate to us is the implementation, proper implementation of the Prime Minister's 15-point programme. Yes. The 15-point program, the Prime Minister, is a composite program which will address all issues of the relating to minorities. And most of the Sechar Committee recommendations are being implemented through the 15-point program, the Prime Minister. And this 15-point program spread over to these 11 ministries that we talked about. It. So the bulk of the expenditure which takes place is in this ministry on the social sector. Roughly about more than 3 to 3 and a half lakhs crores uh, of funds are spent through for the social sector by these ministries. So the Prime Minister 15 point programs emphasizes that at least 15 percent of this share of this uh, social sector expenditure should reach to the minorities. And uh, it is the, the and there are monitoring mechanism with the PMO with our ministry and the state government. But our major concern is whether this mandate of the Prime Minister that the 15-point the program should reach and uh, that is the major task which we are thinking and my experience uh, so far is good as far as I am, I am dealing with, I am talking to the ministers, I am writing to the ministers, I am writing to the chief ministers, I am writing, uh, reminding them that it is so how important it is to take everybody together how important it is to the resources should be properly allocated everybody should get opportunities so i, I am i have written to the all the chief minister i am writing to the respective ministries i am holding review meetings with the ministries i am holding meetings with the bankers so that there should be credit flow all these steps have been stopped. how has your experience been dealing with the states now we understand that in this entire federal debate there's also this question of monitoring that you've also been talking about. How is it to really deal with states, especially the, the non-Congress states as well? By and large, the states are cooperating. But we, the state as well as the centre lacks proper monitoring mechanism. Our monitoring system is weak. It is not only in the uh, programmes relating to minority, but all monitoring schemes are weak. There is a need to have a monitoring mechanism. So oh, even other ministries are thinking of uh, where they, they have to reach out to the people, uh, thinking of having an independent monetary mechanism so that the feedback should be correct and there should be accountability. 
we in our ministry also is trying to set up a monitoring mechanism because we are not satisfied with the uh, bureaucratic monitoring system which is going on now. Because I am not blaming the bureaucracy, but there is, they have no time. You cannot entrust everything to the same bureaucracy who, has, who, who will not be able to deliver. So th their, their job is to be supplemented by NGOs and other uh, organizations. And in, in, fact, in fact, my emphasis is the, the, the minorities themselves should take active interest in, get, in, in, re, in yes. receiving, in getting what their due share. They cannot si simply say uh, quite uh, and they say they will deliver. So they should be proactive also. So their NGOs should be proactive. There are some of the steps we are, uh, I am trying to Political implement. will is also a question, especially when, you know, let's talk about say a state like Gujarat, uh, where in fact you've uh, on record also mentioned that there have been issues when it comes to really talking about some of the measures that especially scholarships, if you're trying to really put in there. How have you really approached these states? See, yes, we have in one or two states this problem will be there. But uh, we, by communication, we would like to be, we would not to confront. We, I, I don't believe in confrontation. Okay. I believe in uh, impressing upon them the need to that. They, because in delivering to the uh, vulnerable section of society, we have to rise above politics, above uh, the party, um, I think the governments is governments, then they have to look after, yes, party governments are there, but ultimately they, they are for meant for the people. So I will try to impress upon them and we have taken up the matters and I'm sure that uh, the states will cooperate. There's also this issue of, of, you know, the entire minority debate getting, you know, completely hijacked by the Muslim agenda. What is your ministry really doing when it comes to all the other minorities? You see, it is, it is not so because uh, the minorities in this country is about 18.4 percent to all minorities put together. Out of that 13.4 is the Muslims. So in the nearly 70-74 percent of the minorities are Muslims. So sometimes in that it, it is because this, the, the, this section always feel that they are uh, not getting that due share, they are proactive in, in uh, exhibiting. But the ministry addresses the problems of all the minorities. In fact, uh, I am going to constitute a, a, each the consultative committee of each of the five minorities, recognized minorities, so that because uh, though it is a minority ministry, the, these minorities are not, uh, their problems are not common. I see Christians problems are not common with Muslims and Muslim problems common with Buddhists or Parsis yes. because they, 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 they are different societies. Yes. They are economic, so, conditions are economic condition, educational condition. In Parsis, 100% educated. Yes. In the Christians, the percentage of education is much more. In Buddhists, the percent of education. So the issues are different. So uh, the, the, I am trying to see that the, each issue of each minorities are uh, discussed and attended according to the, by their respective councils. So I am going to constitute about five consultative councils, uh, committees to the ministry, so that we can address the issues of other minorities also. All right, we'll take a short break and again. And, and when we come back, we take a look at some of the contentious issues that have always marred the entire debate around minorities in the country. But after the break. Welcome back. We're discussing the condition of minorities in the country with Minorities Affairs Minister Rehman Khan Saab. There are a number of issues that tend to really dominate the entire discourse. There is also this talk about reservations these, these days. To what extent is your government really committed to pursuing that? And where have we really reached when it comes to talking about, you know, the implementation of Ranganath Mishra? You see, we are committed to reservation. That is why the government set up a Ranganath Mishra Commission. And also, in the election manifesto of the Congress, we had committed to provide reservation on the basis of Karnataka and Kerala model. It is very, I am emphasizing Karnataka and Kerala model, which is among, within the backward class reservation, a sub quota, that is the uh, commitment of it. Then we set up a Ranganath Mishra Commission report. And that report is there, it has been presented to the government. The Ranganath Mishra Commission report has taken into consideration the various aspects of uh, constitutionality and providing reservation. The government is still to take a stand on that because it is 
certain areas it is uh, uh, whether how far this constitutionally is to be the government is still to take a position because it is a very complicated issue as far as the reservation is concerned 4.5 reservation we had announced that is our commitment we had fulfilled the commitment unfortunately this was uh, taken up under the pil uh, and the andhra pradesh high court has uh, uh, set aside the judgment now it is before the supreme court of appeal and we we, we are confident that uh, this uh, decision of the court is based on not on certain they have they have said they have not rejected the reservation as as per se what they have said is it is the the definition of minority is not homogeneous homogeneous group or and then there is a lack of data the backward class commission has not been consulted these are some of the technicalities on which the uh, reservation was struck down by the high court and it is before the supreme court we are confident we are able we will be able to provide all the material which is uh, been pointed out and uh, this commitment remains reservation commitment as far as the percentage and all that it uh, uh, we, the government is committed for reservation there is no doubt about it and uh, the percentage and all that depends upon the supreme the existing judgment more than 50% reservation cannot be uh, there these are all the government the, there are remote issue people may say that we want 10% we want 20% and all that but the beginning has been made by the upa government i am confident that uh, the so we are committed for this reservation a number of other uh, legislations and institutions that that were supposed to be created by the minorities affairs ministry including the uh, equal opportunities commission are still not really moving beyond a point what's really been the challenge there the equal opportunity committee commission is one of the major recommendation of the sachar committee the cabinet has given in principle approval for setting up of the equal opportunity committee a draft bill has also been circulated and uh, there were used to be some contentions that what type what should be its scope and all that and now that uh, we have received uh, uh, all comments on that uh, hopefully the equal opportunity commission bill uh, will be introduced in the coming session of the parliament now in the current session of the parliament obviously there are two content contentious issues that are really uh, that may affect the minorities as well one is of course uh, the issue of reservations for scs sts and promotions which is uh, al- already been discussed and samajwadi party seems to be taking a very strong stand on that the other issue of course is is some amendments coming in the unlawful activities prevention act which is the anti terror laws you know uh, expanding the ambit what has been your response when it comes to from the minority is he i the uapa bill which is amendment which is coming and actually the minorities have strong reservation on this bill let me be very frank about it is that they feel see they are not against any uh, legislations to fight terrorism i would like to make it very clear the minorities are not or the muslims are not against strict legislation but they are afraid of misuse of the legislature because our laws are necessary strict laws are necessary there is no mechanism for the misuse of the laws what they are asking is not that don't bring a law there should be an accountability for those who use the law see with the process what has happened in recent years with the process the minority is losing confidence in the in 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 the implementation of the law so that is what is this concern which i i am conveying it to the government as a minority affairs minister it is my concern to address to the concern of the lot section of the minorities who are apprehensive of the its implementation so i have been and it is the duty and the mandate of this ministry is to bring it to the notice of the respective ministry who enact legislation to keep a watch that it should not be misused and that in that our ministry is taking up this matter with other ministries and uh, we certainly want strong legislation we certainly want that all measures through the curb terrorism and uh, the minorities one with the uh, everybody if, if anybody is a terror he should be punished even as punishment but at the same time the the implementing when you when you use the law you should be used with accountability that accountability aspect they feel is not there okay the other issue of course which is uh, again related to security of of especially the muslim community uh, or any other minority group is is that of communal violence bill um, that's also something that has been contentious the bjp has been raising issues as far as the draft is concerned 
But at the end of the day, you know, communal violence continues to be prevalent in, in many pockets in the country. Do you think the time has really come to take, to take this bill very seriously? You see, this bill is very important. The National Advisory Council had drafted a bill which was sent to the parliament. The threat was adopted and then introduced and it went to standing committee. You see, the, 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 unfortunately, there is a, a, always such bills are taken on communal lines. That should not be. These bills are to curb misuse of law. See, what is communal violence bill? See, whenever there is a communal violence takes place, there is a strict, and when people who uh, violate the law should be punished. And those who implement the law, those who are responsible to implement the, the law, if they fail, they also should be punished. They should also be accountable. This is what the communal violence bill says it. Now they bring center state relations, the law, these are all things which is not very important. We can sort it out, but there should be a total account. What is this bill, the communal violence bill aims at? That the, the, the law enforcing agency should be equally accountable for, for not preventing communal disturbance, for not uh, 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 adequately compensating, for misusing the law which was used for curbing. This is the provisions in the law. So what, is, what should be the objection? Why should there be an objection when, when the law is to punish those who are not uh, acting responsibility? So that is what the, the minorities, particularly the Muslims, ask. Yes, you, you, you don't want to give us a law which we have the right, if the law is misused, we should be right to, to uh, ask the accountability of the law enforcing agency. This is what the bill with the government has introduced, EMS set. Some of the states say that we are encroaching on the rights of the state. It is not so. They should cooperate in, in, in ending the strict communal violence bill where the the uh, law enforcing agency should equally be accountable as those who perpetrate communal disturbance. Both are to be punished. Right. Just one last question in conclusion. What, according to you, is, is going to be the way ahead for minority affairs in the country, especially now that we have just a few months left before the 2014? You see, uh, as I told in the beginning, that uh, the expectation of people, particularly the minorities, is more because I, now they have a full-fledged minority affairs minister. As I would like to draw a road map. I may not be able to implement everything, but I would draw a road map which will give them the confidence and empower the minorities of the country. And they could run shoulder to shoulder with other brethren of this country. I greet all the minorities on this Minority Day through Rajya Sabha channel. Thanks a lot for speaking with us. Man.